and then it ended up getting like 5 million views. So... As a full-time social media content creator, I have learned a couple things in my day about different social media platforms, how I tend to get greater engagement, how I grow my audience, how I build true connection with my audience, and also just how to study what is working on a platform versus what doesn't work anymore because literally every single platform's algorithm changes every two seconds. So I wanted to make this video on how to get engagement, maintain engagement, and kind of the trends that I've seen on Instagram in 2021. This is kind of like a part two to my first video, which is how I doubled my Instagram engagement. But I've gotten so many DMs from people saying, thank you so much for your tips. My Instagram engagement has doubled, tripled. I'm kind of making a second video to that for more of the 2021 updated algorithm. If you want to be that girl on Instagram, keep on watching. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Sadie Aldis if you want a little bit of an example of what I do on Instagram. Fun fact, I also can't see, like maybe this is in focus, mm -hmm. I'm actually really not sure. I don't know what my makeup looks like. I did my makeup without my contact lenses on because I broke mine. I didn't want to wear my glasses because they like distort my eyes and I feel like it would be super distracting to see like distorted eyes every single time that I move. My video notes on my phone, I can barely read them. I had to make the font so big. The absolute first thing that I want to talk about is quality over quantity. I used to post every second day on Instagram um, and I would religiously follow that. And I have been following that for maybe two plus Last years, um, I was really pushing myself to get a photo out every other day. I have noticed that even if I post once every second day or once a week or twice a week or somewhere in that range, the engagement on my photos and the followers that I get over like that period of time doesn't change. Like I haven't noticed any change in the amount of reach or whatever I get if I post every second day versus if I post like once a week. To be honest, I just love posting on Instagram so I feel like I'm still just gonna post basically every second day. Take that as you wish and keep it up here. It has to be good quality photos because then people will be like, okay, well, she had a whole week to post a photo and it's only like a blurry photo of her pinky. Like, if there is something special about the photo, a location, a satisfying color scheme, I've noticed that photos, when I match kind of my outfit to the background, contrary to popular belief, I used to think that this would be really weird because I'd be like melting into, melting, <laughs> blending into the background, but I actually have noticed that when I do that, my followers really like that. Like, it's really pleasing to the eye. They always compliment me on the composition of the photo, and it looks like everything just goes together. Nothing is clashing. If you have cool makeup, if you have a really cool outfit, something different that your followers aren't used to seeing you in. That is a really good asset to have in your Instagram photos, especially if you're not going to be posting as often and you're going to be focusing more on the quality. This is a conversation that I've had with a ton of people actually. I've asked their opinion on this and it's kind of been back and forth. For me, I do like to plan out my photos just to kind of go through a cycle of like far away shots, medium shots, up close shots, and filler shots just to make sure that I'm not going to be like posting two filler photos in a row or posting two selfies that look exactly the same in like the square on my feed. I don't need to have like a full on theme that looks really, really cute. I also use the color map tool. And what that does is it just basically shows the most prominent like color of that photo on the app. This is not sponsored by the way. So you can see like if this photo is pink and this photo is pink and this photo is pink, maybe you should post this one above. Since I have noticed that unlike YouTube and other social media platforms, posting more doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be boosted in the algorithm, especially in Instagram posts. So that is why I suggest using Instagram Reels to gain traffic and gain new followers specifically. It is so, so unlikely that you're going to blow up from an Instagram post. Reels kind of gives you that TikTok for you page opportunity. Like for example, the first Reels that I ever did, it was a dance one. I did not think it was going to blow up. I just kind of like made it. I had early access to the Reels feature. So I was like, I might as well just put something up. And then it ended up getting like 5 million views. So use reels to your advantage. With that said, make sure that you are making reels that are super true to your brand and the content that you really like posting. I have had it happen to me many times where I have had reels that have blown up, gotten like 5 million plus views. I gain like thousands of followers from those reels and then those reels weren't really like my niche 
or like what I'm used to posting. They were kind of just like things that I found funny and things that I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna post this. <laughs> and after that, my follower count started going down and those new followers actually ended up unfollowing me in the long run because they were expecting more of that content and they didn't get that. So that was a super good learning lesson for me. Just make sure that all of the reels that you are posting are not like chasing reach, chasing views, chasing engagement because it can be a very short-term gain for a very long-term loss. I hope that made sense. If that didn't make sense, comment down below a pretzel emoji. Maybe I'll re-explain it. I feel like I just blabbed on for the same thing for like 20 minutes. I'm going to reiterate what I said in my last video just to confirm that this is still a thing. When I post more Instagram stories a day, it doesn't even matter what type of Instagram story they are. If I post more often, I will get more views. Point blank, if I post 10 stories one day, I will probably get double the amount of views on that than if I posted three. Like I give myself a quota of how many stories I would like to have up in the day. And I also always repost my reels to my story. That is another thing. If you are making reels, I was so confused because I was making reels for so long. I wasn't posting them to my grid. I was just posting them to my reels. And they were getting like 300 views. And I'm like, something's wrong here because I have 200,000 followers and I have 300 views on this reels. Like it doesn't make sense. Then I realized that after I posted it to my story, I started getting thousands of views. If you don't post it to your grid, it's going to be so far down in other people's feeds when they're like scrolling on Instagram. If you can make it aesthetically pleasing to fit inside of your Instagram grid, the engagement is going to be a lot more than if you just posted it on your reels. But if you really don't think it's going to fit into your grid well, then make sure that you're posting on your story. Instagram will basically test your reels in the first hour and see how people are liking it, if they're liking, commenting, if they're watching the whole thing. That's how Instagram decides if they're going to push that content to more people or if they're just going to not. <laughs> so that's why I would definitely make sure to post it straight away to your story so you can get the most engagement at the beginning. Do not post only promotional things on your stories, like when you're constantly giving yourself shout outs. Buy the merch, watch my video, check out my new Instagram story. <laughs> you can definitely do that, but just make sure that that's not all of your posts and all of your stories. I have actually I've actually muted a lot of people that do that just because I want to be on Instagram to be inspired. I've always loved taking photos. I've always loved like just taking my camera, taking photos of a rock. It's very transparent when someone's just posting for the creative aspect versus posting just to promote their own stuff. My other tip is if you have kind of like a following on Instagram, like you're kind of a creator, you consider yourself an influencer, something like that, I would definitely suggest to make it kind of like a friendship kind of vibe between you and your followers instead of like an influencer and their fans. Ask them how their day was. Get super personal on Instagram stories. Like share vulnerable things that you are comfortable sharing. Share like the funny slash like relatable things that happened to you in your day. Candid moments. You want to let them know that you want to know what's up with their life as much as they want to know what's up with yours. It is way more likely for someone to unfollow you on Instagram than it probably is on any other platform. Literally everyone that you follow will always show up in your feed on like a tiny little screen so you can only see one thing at a time. It's not like your YouTube subscription box when you see a bunch of videos but you don't have to like them you just kind of scroll and you see whichever one looks interesting and you click on it also TikTok is just a lot faster and when you have the option between following and for you don't get discouraged if you see your follower count going down or even staying the same because Instagram is so competitive like think about it don't get me wrong every single social media platform is so saturated but on Instagram it's like not only influencers or social media content creators have Instagram anyone and everyone can have Instagram so if you're gonna be bound to lose some followers or say the same don't get discouraged by that if you are a kind of small content creator or micro influencer and you want to be able to do some brand deals definitely don't be afraid to tag brands on brands on brands they can reach out to you you will be responsive because they don't have to go through a manager and they want to make a relationship with influencers before they blow up so if they see someone that they really like their content and they believe in then they want to establish a relationship with you and do a partnership or just send you some products for free just to have that relationship with you before you go into an upward spiral why am i getting a headache oh probably because i'm not wearing any glasses and i can't see <sighs> sorry <gasps> And once again, just make sure that you're not constantly posting brand deals because that's definitely a turnoff. I have definitely unfollowed people when they've just kind of posted too many brand deals and you're like, okay, we know that maybe Instagram isn't your creative outlet. 
Don't think that sponsorships only have to be with a brand. I have had so many restaurants and just kind of like events and things that have DM'd me reaching out saying, hey, we'd love to have you at our spa if you want to get your eyebrows microbladed or if you want to get a lash lift or if you want to come to our restaurant and post a photo here, if you want to come to this event. Just make sure to tag all of the companies that you use in your daily life. Go to a hotel and you really liked it. Maybe they will want to sponsor you and have you for one free night at a hotel. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be like the basic clothes or skincare or makeup things. Since we all kind of have a low attention span right now and I blame that on TikTok, I definitely like to kind of take some of the aspects of TikTok and put them into my Instagram account. I use the caption options on the stories that I talk in and I definitely try to talk more in my stories, like just talking to the phone because I feel like it's just more candid that way and I love when other people do that. So one, I talk more, which is a lot more like TikTok. Two, I add music to basically all of my Instagram stories that are silent to make it kind of look more like TikTok and three I will always use captions when I'm doing the talking ones it's more likely that someone's going to stay and watch your entire story if they can like read along with you now I'm just gonna kind of talk about some aesthetic and editing trends that I have been seeing kind of to have your that girl Instagram moments first thing is filler photos once again I've talked to many people about this I have differing opinions from some people for me I definitely agree that filler photos are more likely to get less engagement less likes less comments it does also just add this sense of like casualness if that's the word just like more personal and more of a creative feed than if it's just like a photo after photo after photo of someone's face I don't know I truly just love putting filler photos even if they do get less engagement because it just feels like a more creative thing no strong filters I can count maybe like five social media content creators that I follow on Instagram right now that use strong filters and it's probably just because I like them as a person and I like their content anyways it is so trendy to barely use any filters or use like a really low non-invasive filter I just normally go into Lightroom address like the exposure and the contrast and the highlights a lot of the times I actually won't even bring it into another app I'll just use the iPhone editing app the other thing is just photo dumps it's like oh my weekend photo dump once again making Instagram more casual more personal to you I've seen a ton of more far away photos be super trendy when like the subject is super small maybe in like the bottom corner of the screen and the rest is the sky or rest is just a really cool location it also looks really good on the theme when you have kind of like an open space around the person's head I feel like a year ago no one would have posted a photo with that much like headroom or blank space but right now it's just like such a creative thing to do and it just makes your feed look so cool we're using like the cool perspective tools like adjusting the vertical and horizontal kind of perspectives like kind of distorting the photo like making your legs look super long there's like fisheye lenses and all those cute little things I feel like those are so in right now giving them that kind of retro look just like really getting creative with the photography and the modeling and the poses not everything has to be like you know visco basic photos people who seem to have a niche aesthetic like a businesswoman or a beach girl tend to get high engagement because their followers know exactly why they follow them they know what to expect people just love knowing what a person's niche is and all of their feed goes together their Instagram story highlights are all cohesive but don't worry if you don't actually have like a super visible niche I don't even have a super visible niche but I'm just saying if you can do that I find it very attractive and very satisfying <laughs> with all those trends said I definitely think a lot of people are starting to look the exact same on Instagram so if you do have like Photoshop talent and you have like a more of a creative vision for your Instagram and you want to make really cool and different and cinematic photos definitely do that because I feel like there's a lot of room for someone like that to blow up. Last thing is for brand deals. I actually asked my subscribers in one of my YouTube videos if they prefer a more edited and produced Instagram brand deal, whether that's like a story, a reel, or a photo, or just like a more casual, hey guys, this is what I'm using right now, this is why I like it, peace out, use my link, use my code. I actually got really surprised at the answers and they said more casual ones, like ones that are less produced, have less editing. I can't even remember the last time that I've made an Instagram post without editing editing it at all and just kind of like recorded it in Instagram, added some text and then 
and sent it for approval. Like I am always on Final Cut Pro, adding music, adding sound effects, color grading it, like editing it, chopping it together. And I was really surprised that a lot of people didn't prefer that, which is kind of crazy. Now I have some questions for you. So please respond in the comments your answers to these questions because I'm so curious right now and this would really help me. If someone has a more cohesive theme, are you more likely to follow them? Like if they have a kind of like niche aesthetic or if they have their own feed and if their feed looks all put together, are you more likely to follow them or does it not really matter? Do you unfollow someone if they post too much? Like do you find that annoying or do you like it? Do you like more professional photos versus more casual photos? Like which one would you rather see? And lastly, do you like filler photos or do you not like filler photos? On your own Instagram and seeing other people's filler photos, let me know down below. Definitely don't take this video too seriously. I am not a an Instagram genius. I'm just sharing what I have learned from being on the app for so long. Subscribe and press the bell if you want more videos like this. I love you guys so much. Follow my Instagram at Sadie Aldis if you want to, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.